When it comes to open stance versus closed stance, I don't even want you to think about it in those terms. See, the truth is, if I'm playing a match and I play a long rally, if you ask me afterwards how many open stance forehands did you hit, I would have no clue because I'm definitely not thinking about uh, how my feet are positioned. It's all happening completely intuitively. So position yourself in the middle. I'll explain it to you so it makes sense. Okay. So it has to do with the sequencing on the forehand. So go in your ready position. And now what are you gonna do if you see the ball coming to your forehand? You're gonna make a turn, right? So look how you're positioned. And you see your back foot, your dominant leg is behind the non-dominant leg. And this is what people call the semi-open stance forehand. And you're gonna do this on balls that have a lot of penetration. In other words, the ball is going to come through the court really fast and there's really no need to step forward on a ball like that and you are simply going to wait for the ball in this position. Yeah, that's how most forehands are struck. I would say 95% of forehands at the high level are struck like that, simply because there's a lot of penetration on the incoming ball. Okay. So players are just waiting on the ball. They're not thinking to set up this way. There's just a natural setup on a forehand where the first thing you do when you see a ball come to your forehand is turning. Now look, right away I'm gonna position like that. Sorry. Now I might be setting up further, but I'm not gonna lose this position. I'm gonna hit, use this position on 95% of my forehands simply because I'm gonna wait to hit the ball. There's no need to step up to it. Okay. Now on the other hand, if you get a ball with no penetration, let's say for example a backhand slice, and we're in the worst case scenario the ball would bounce twice before it gets to you. Of course you have to step up to a ball like that. And how are you going to do that? Well go back to your ready position and now you're going to see a forehand, you're going to turn and now what's natural? To make a step with your non-dominant leg like that. And you're going to step up to a ball that doesn't have penetration. So let me feed you some okay. and simply go by the incoming ball uh, to position yourself. You're going to determine the penetration of the ball and you're either going to wait for it or you're going to step up to the ball. Okay. This ball right here has no penetration. Right. Yeah, if you look up the, 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 the definition of penetration, it's something that it goes through, through something. Yeah. Hey, look, there's a short ball right here. Look where the second bounce is. It's inside the baseline. So that guy has to step up to that ball. Okay. He won't be able to play it from the baseline or he's going to play it like this. So he has to step up to that ball. This one, this has a lot of penetration. See the second bounce is in the middle of the back fence. Okay. So on that one, you might even have to back up or you can play it by waiting for it. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so the ball that has a lot of action on it, is that another word for it? No. No, that's different? Because action, you're going to think about spin and slice. Okay. Think of it as penetration, how much the ball is going through the court. Through the court. The extreme scenario is a ball that would bounce twice before it gets to you. That ball has very little penetration. Okay. That ball has to be hit with you stepping up to it. Okay. Step up to it. Nice shot. Very nice. Okay, now I'm going to hit it harder. You just simply wait for it, okay? Again, wait for it. Fantastic. Step up to it. Fantastic. There's going to be two exceptions where you always have to hit it off your dominant leg or let's call it semi-open stance and one exception is a short diagonal ball and so imagine like a, a angled cross court or an inside out backhand slice where you hit the ball from here see if you do your closed stance forehand with your non-dominant leg you're going to be completely locked up and this can possibly cause you to hurt your hip so okay. in an instance like that you're going to do something what i call open close so you're going to hit it off your dominant leg and then come through with the non-dominant leg like this and this is also something that might happen on a return of serve nice shot now another instance where it's wise to hit the ball off the dominant leg is a high ball because we're going to have a higher contact and more horizontal swing path it's very awkward to do it off the non-dominant leg and it's much easier to do this type of ball uh, from the dominant leg 